Well, hello, lovely listeners. Um, today, it's my pleasure to be talking to Norbert Hunovix. Um, I met Nor uh, Norbert basically through, we both joined an organization called SFM at different times. Um, never met in the, well, no, I think we have actually met in the flesh, um, probably about two or three years ago at an event. Um, but more recently through Facebook, and we've been in touch and sharing each other's stories, etc. And um, Norbert is a, is a man after my own heart in terms of he um, has quit his normal job, his nine to five, if you want to call it that, um, in pursuit of something that is more purpose driven and where he has more control over his finances. Um, Norbert used to be a massage therapist. He was also a flight steward for Emirates, I believe. Um, and, and now he's on his own journey to become his own boss. So thank you so much, Norbert. It's brilliant to have you here. How are you doing? Hey, Matt, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. <laughs> okay, well, I, I love um, my listeners to hear a little bit of backstory about my guests. So obviously, Norbert, you're, you're very similar to me in terms of the journey that you've been on. So can you give us a little bit of a backstory in, in terms of you know, how you ended up being in a massage therapist, which I didn't realise, and then a flight attendant, and now, to, now doing what you're doing. So sort of talk us through how all of that happened. Mm. So my journey starts back when I was, uh, when I was 23 years old. Um, I, I just knew from the beginning I, I need to do something uh, unique. I need to do something uh, uh, very different than most people do. And um, I always had... In my in my mind that I'm gonna travel the world. I just had this goal that by age of 30 I'm gonna I'm gonna travel the world. So I thought, what what can I learn or what can I have as a skill uh, for me to be able to travel? So I said, okay, let me be a massage therapist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the obvious out, choice. Yeah, <laughs> so it came out of nowhere. I mean, basically because I believe we we are all spiritual beings. Anyway, uh, we are all spiritual beings having a human experience here. So I always love to have people. And I thought, okay, this is a way I can express myself. And, and it's a good way to learn and, you know, and um, move on with this. So I decided when I finished my courses and studies in Hungary, I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to travel the world by, by cruise ship. And they have a job as a massage therapist. So I, um, so I found a way, uh, uh, basically how to get in. And then this is my first time when I left my home country. Um, and which, then is I moved, Hungary. which is Hungary. Which Hungary, is Hungary, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the age of 33, I moved to London. I had some trainings there. And after i been uh, in ships for two years, uh, basically traveling all over the Caribbean, Alaska, South America, and all these places, which was amazing at yes. first. Yeah, it was, was amazing. And then when ships... Uh, finished uh, I moved to states for a while because uh, because I thought why not uh, to to have an experience in the states but in on ships already I had a thought that I I have to I have to work for myself like I always I always had this mindset because basically on ships I didn't get any salary I was working for commissions and I was not really working never for nine to five I was always working 12 13 hours a day so it's more than nine to five. And um, yeah, so, so ships, was, ships was amazing. They moved to US, uh, then, then, uh, then it did not work out the way I planned. Then, okay, then I said, what's next? I, I still want to travel. So, okay, let's be a flight attendant. So, <laughs> so that's how I became a flight attendant. Then I moved to Dubai, uh, was living there for four years and um, had an awesome experience, wasn't easy. But at that moment, I realized when I was in corporate and I just thought to myself, I cannot be this corporate, in this corporate, faking my beingness, smiling when I don't want to smile. And that's what drives me. And okay, I need to do, I need to do something on my own. And that's how we came to, as you mentioned, SFM, uh, our online community. And that's where I started to re-educate myself to the whole online world basically that's the story and when was when did you join sfm in 2018 april i believe were you still working at emirates then 
Yeah, yeah, I was, I was still working, of course. I was still having a full-time job. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And how was living in Dubai, by the way? Because, <coughs> oh, sorry, what a time to get a cough. Because you were living in the US. Um, what part of the US? I was, um, when, basically, when I was working on ships, I was based in Miami. I mean, from, my ships was departing from Miami. And after that, I moved to Miami for a while. And I was traveling to um, uh, California as well so and how was how was Miami because my only experience of Miami up to this point is getting a connecting flight when I was going out to, funnily enough with SFM I did a, a retreat out in the Dominican Republic um, mm -hmm. and I couldn't get the direct flight because my boss wouldn't let me have that extra day to be able to get that flight so I had to get a connecting flight to Miami and then to um, the Dominican from there and the Miami airport was horrific. They were like absolute, um, what's the word? Miserable is one word. Um, and like very regimented. It was, a it was a horrible, horrible, horrible process. And um, yeah, and my other experience, so I've been in New York airports, again, pretty regimented, pretty not very nice. Texas, lovely, everybody's lovely. So what was um, Miami like to live in? Um, at first, it was, uh, it was uh, a big surprise because when I first spent more days, weeks and months in Miami, I was like, am I in the US? Because everyone speaks Spanish. <laughs> right. Because all the people from, uh, yeah. from Cuba and Dominica, Cuba, everybody, yeah. Yeah. they moved there. So I felt like in Spain or Latin America. So like this is a bit weird um but then <clears throat> because when i was even younger my my dream was all to move to us us is the best country in the world and stuff but then i lived there i realized this is just not not my uh, uh, not my cup of tea as as uh, as you would say in england so i was like no 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 i need i need to i need to move from the, from here okay and so so you quickly realized America is not for you. Yeah. And what about Dubai? How, I mean, I've got, I've been to Dubai once. I've got friends that live out there and they've actually lived out there now. I think they moved in 94. So they've been out there a long time. Yeah. Most people apparently last about 10 years in Dubai because of the lifestyle and, and the heat probably. Um, but they, they're, they're, they're there for, well, They've been there for a long time and I think they want to retire to Thailand. I think that's the dream for them. It's a lot cheaper to live in Thailand and they can live like kings there. So how did you find Dubai? Mm, uh, I mean, uh, like compared to US, it's a whole different world. And compared to Europe, it's a, con a totally different world. Um, first of all, the rules are more different. Uh, like, uh, as, as we all know, uh, the, the Southeast, it's a whole different culture with the men and the women and stuff like this. So um, personally, I love, I love the heat. I love to be in a warm environment. I love the sun. So this is one of the best things in Dubai that you have the sun in 90% of the, of the year or maybe more. And it, yes, it's, it's extremely hot uh, during summer. It's very, very, hot, very, very, very hot, but you know what I would say? I would prefer to be in that heat than being cold. That's yeah. my perspective. And um, basically, uh, you get used to to live in Dubai. I I I found out that it's uh, um, extremely safe to live there. Yeah, it's it's very safe. Uh, but I mean, maybe these days things has changed a little bit because my wife has been stolen uh, a scooter she she purchased which is very weird for me. Um, but, uh, but in general, the, like the safety is really cool. The safety is really cool. And, um, and yeah, you can just have this peace of mind that you, whatever you go out, evening time, night time, that, that is going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, no crime on the streets, as it were. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no, no way. Yeah, I mean, I think they still run the um chop your hand off if you sort of steal type of scenario i think um 
I mean, not, I mean, not that severe, but for sure, if 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 they catch the person who, if they catch you with something, they uh, they're just gonna put out. Uh, I mean, they, they're just gonna basically remove you from the country. That's it. Yeah. So they're just gonna deport you. Okay, and then so where are you living right now? Are you back in Hungary? Yeah, uh, I'm back in my hometown. Uh, yeah, in my hometown. Yeah. So hometown. you joined. Okay, so you joined SFM 2018. You weren't feeling um, content in what you were doing. You were still flying on the planes. Um, so how was that journey for you from then till now? Sort of joining SFM, same as me, it was a uh, an opportunity to be able to learn an awful lot about being able to run your own business online and become the master of your own income and be able to work from anywhere in the world. That's that's what sells us all on it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we, as we go through that journey, you know, everyone's different. And I've, I started doing the affiliate marketing the same as you and um, have since be gone into coaching. So how, how has the journey been for you? Uh, well, when I first got started, I, as it was my first online uh, um, attempt as well. And, um, uh, I, I, I believe uh, in the beginning I had this high expectation of myself that I'm going to leave my job in, in one year or in six months or at least two and a half years. I'm going to be living the laptop lifestyle, shiny, um, being on the beach and uh, see, sipping on, on pina coladas and stuff. <laughs> uh, but it's not really uh, the way it, it happened. Um, and um, when, when I first joined, I remember uh, I had this entitlement because I invested in a program, so it needs to give me uh, a certain result. Uh, and because I, I, because I quite did a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, I sacrificed a lot. I sold my car, I bought my loan because I went all in, because I said to myself, this is the way I'm, I have to, uh, and I want to make it. Um, but uh, as uh, as we step on that journey, uh, like the journey is very different. Like one thing, what you plan, and the other thing, what is mm, the real world. Um, so, since uh, I've been here for three years now, mm, yeah, more or less, um, uh, I realized that this is a journey, and and as of now, I'm moving out from from SFM and all this stuff that. That I realized that this is this is the way I'm gonna make it for sure. My future is online, and I and I would never have a, for example, a coffee shop, or I don't know, like uh, you know, this brick and mortar style of businesses because because uh, to be online and and to and to grow online is 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 the future I believe for 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 many people, even though people are not even realizing what they have in hand. Yeah. So, um, so you, you mentioned about moving away from SFM. So what, what's the sort of vision as we sit here today in terms of what that business may look like? Uh, so basically, same as you, Mel, I started as an affiliate and, now, uh, and I want to continue on this affiliate path. But what I realized along the way, you don't have to stick to one, one program or just one thing. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can develop skills to be uh, basically an independent marketer. And, and go into any niches you want to. So it's not only one way, there's, uh, there's uh, a few different ways or more different ways to, to make this happen. So what I'm doing now, I'm focusing on my own brand, building my, myself up yeah, in, without paid advertising and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, and I believe this is, this is the way how everyone should be starting, but this is a topic for another day. So basically, you're looking at a more organic approach. You're looking to improve your um, brand and awareness online for people to know Norbert and to like Norbert. Um, to trust. Yeah. And trust, yeah. Um, and, and But you're also going to continue with those affiliate programs. Do you have any other sort of desires to do anything other than the affiliate right now? Any other things in the future? I mean, in, in, in the future, I will see, but uh, as of now, I'm mainly focusing on to, to become a marketer. Yeah. Um, because 
because in order to run our own businesses, for instance, as you are as a coach, you need to need to know who you're talking to, you need to have sales and marketing skills, which is necessary for, for any business. Yeah. So th- this is what I'm gonna focus on to, to develop those skills. Yeah. So uh, and, and and from that what's gonna unfold, I don't know. Yeah. It's gonna be anything. So that takes me to um, the move to Japan. Um, so where I know that's imminent, that's that's happening very, very, very soon. So why Japan? Um, when did you make that decision? And um, and what? Yeah, I'm just interested to know what your vision is for Japan. So take us from when you sort of decided that that was happening or whether somebody else has decided for you, I don't know. But yeah, how did it all come about? Yeah. Um, uh, like one thing before we move on, in, in my life, everything happens out of nowhere and so suddenly, as, oh, really? as, <laughs> as, you already, as you already discussed, like becoming a massage therapist came out of like out of the blue, uh, being a fire attendant as well. So same here. Um, basically, I met, I met my girlfriend who became my wife already. So my wife is Japanese. And um, the reason why I'm moving to Japan is because she's Japanese and we, des- and we decided together. Yeah. But, um, okay, let's move to Japan. Um, uh, the backstory of it, we met in Dubai. She's uh, a flight attendant as well. So we met on one of the flights to Japan, which I have to wait for two and a half years to get uh, a, a flight to Japan because it's not easy to get a Japan flight in Emirates. Because uh, at that time when I was working, it was 20 plus, no, 23,000 cabin crews uh, and everyone uh, basically wanted to go to Japan. So it why was, is that? What, what, why is Japan so good? Uh, I don't know. If you ask, if you ask people, if, if let's say you go out on the street today and you ask someone if you want to go to Japan, I think out of 10 people, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, out of 10, nine people would say yes. I don't know why. But people are just um, just drawn to visit Japan or just yeah. pull to visit Japan. I don't know because of the of the, of the culture and it's and it's different because people think Asia is just Asia, but it's not. It's same as Europe. We have some countries. So same same with Asia. It's uh, it's it's a whole new world. Like it's completely different than to be in China or to be in Malaysia or in Singapore. It's just different vibes. Yeah, and, and then when I went there, it's a beautiful country. Sorry? I've heard it's a beautiful country. I've never been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's awesome. And um, and yeah. So uh, basically, long story short, uh, I had a flight with 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 the woman. I didn't know that she's gonna be become my wife at that time. And um, yeah, and th- things happen. And um, last year, back in 2020, when, when COVID hit, uh, Emirates made me, re- made me redundant and plus 7,000 more people. So I had to leave Dubai and she, she was in Dubai. I was in Hungary. So we are apart from each other for more than a year. So we're not, we are not physically together because she's still working in Dubai. I'm here in Hungary. So we had a choice to make, either we're gonna stay together or, or we don't stay together. And that's how we got married. We got married online, actually. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, so when did you get married? So if you got made redundant last year, you weren't married at that point? No, we were not married at that point. Okay. So our marriage happened online, which is insane. Online? Online, yes, yes. It's a, uh, it's, is the new, is, is the new world. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, I mean, me too. Trust me, I didn't know that it's possible, because in Hungary, there's no way you can get married like this. Wow. Uh, I'm not, uh, like, like I'm not sure in England, if you can, uh, if you can get married online, if you can get married online, I'm not sure if it's possible I mean, even in England. But anyway, what I did was. Uh, I sent my ID and my certificates what needed to be done for the paperwork. I sent it in an envelope from Hungary to Japan and I was praying to, to the higher juniors for, to the package to arrive to Japan. And then my wifey, my wife, my wifey, she went into the, in the, into the place where she needed to go and uh, 
the accepted is. It's like, he's, he's the idea I want to make this person. He's the paperwork. And they said, okay. <laughs> so that's how we got married. And then we did the visa paperwork, which is a completely different story. It's, uh, it's very complicated, but we did it. And uh, that's how I got to Japan. Uh, that's how I'm moving to Japan, basically. Okay, so... Uh, I know it's a lot to judge. Uh, I know it's a lot. To... Yeah, no, no. Well, I, do you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, A, how unromantic to get married online. But I'm guessing... Um, can you hear me? Because I think the internet just... I lost you. Um, yeah, my internet keeps playing up. It's driving me nuts. Oh, my, my first thoughts were, apo apologies, Norbert, but how unromantic to get married online but I'm guessing it was a necessary step for you then to be able to move to Japan to be with her. Is yeah, that and, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And the same goes if you move to if she moves to Europe. We need, yeah. She comes here, or I go to Japan. We need to have the paperwork. Okay. Obviously, we haven't done this because of the paperwork. Obviously, we are in love and we love each other. Yeah. And I don't think many couples would go through what we went through to be apart from each other for one year and basically be that strong trust and foundation to uh, like to commit to each other and and then walk on this journey together. I'm not sure if many couples, will, many people would, would do this, but, um, but obviously it's us. So. Yeah, I mean, okay, so so you, you've you've got the official stamp if you like you're able now to move to japan and and at last be reunited with your wife which you must be seriously looking forward to right yeah of course yeah 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 of course i mean it's it's not easy to be apart she's that in dubai i mean in hungary i mean she, she's struggling emotionally i'm struggling emotionally so it's been a long long time that we that we that we be apart obviously we met twice but just for a couple of days, but this is not the same when you live together. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me actually. Um, my I interviewed a guy called Chris Berry um, last week uh, on the podcast that that will be published next week. And he his wife is Colombian, and he met her on Tinder. That's how they met each other. Um, and she was living in Paris at the time with her job, um, and then basically. They fell in love, decided that she was going to move in with him in the UK, got him south his house and everything. And then literally, I think it was two days before they were, they were due to do that. Her work told her that she had to go to Dubai um, for work. And four years she was out there and he flew out every weekend to see her for four years. Um, and then she finally got the visa for the UK and, and obviously then moved to the UK and they're, they're living happily ever after, hopefully. Um, so it just reminded me of that, you know, what some couples go through to be together. It really is inspiring because there are so many couples, me included, many years ago that are in unhappy relationships. That, you know, the people that are settling for better the devil, you know, um, it's easy. Um, I'm safe financially. I'm secure. Um you know, and all these other irrational thoughts that go through people's minds to keep them stuck in an unhappy relationship. And then I've got, and, and by the way, this guy that Chris, he wasn't in an, in an unhappy relationship for many, many years in his first marriage. Um, but it's inspiring to me, you know, the, the love stories, if you like, that are happening all around the world, yours included, um, where you've gone through way more than most couples will to make sure that that bond stays and you stay together and um luckily you've got the wanderlust and you don't mind moving to japan and and i guess your wife's the same being on the planes but um yeah it's just it's lovely and um so you're you're moving in literally about four days did you say yeah it, to be exact five days five My days is in five days yeah five more sleeps five more sleeps <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. Uh, so and um, so when you get to Japan, obviously, um, I guess you're just going to enjoy each other for a while, but you're just going to continue to do what you're doing now, building your brand, building your marketing business. Yeah. Uh, just one, uh, just one caveat to the story, because it's not that easy. So okay. 
As I'm moving now to Japan, my wife, she's still not be there with me. So I'm going to be alone in Japan because oh. she, she, she has resigned from her job in Emirates in Dubai, which will uh, take, uh, take her till, uh, until end of November, uh, sorry, until end of December to be, to be able to live uh, because that's when her contact contact uh, finishes right. so she, she needs to stay in Dubai for until December so I'm gonna be alone for more than a month on my own in Japan yeah, and yeah. not speaking a word of Japanese and um, yeah I want to just find out my find out and figure out my my way are you are you gonna be living anywhere near her family mm, nope her family's gonna be like one and a half hours away have they met you online uh, they I met her mom in live once but at that time we were not a couple even so oh, okay. but yeah i i saw my my mother-in-law yeah yep. she's my mother-in-law yeah uh, i saw her a few times online and uh, we kind of communicated by hand and hi and and uh, yeah but in in live we have never met each other yet and are you gonna try and learn japanese mm, yes on my way because I'm the one who needs to learn because they, I'm, I'm not sure if they will be able to learn English. Um, so I, I, I need to step up and learn Japanese, which yeah. I will, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be uh, challenging because obviously it's a completely different way of speaking, you know, in terms of how they write things compared to oh, yeah. how, yeah, wow, okay. So, um, wow, well, Norbert, is there anything else you wanted to share, by the way, about that? Uh, you, you know, uh, you mean about Japan itself? Um, yeah, just one more thing. Um, basically, it's it's uh, same with business. When you start out in business, uh, we start the unknown. But it's really up to you if you're gonna walk and embrace this unknown. And things might not go in a way you plan because for sure it will not go the way you plan. Um, but it's always gonna end for the way it has to be. I mean, for your growth. And uh, same in Japan, uh, for, me, for me now to move in, uh, to Japan, a whole new country, a completely different culture, but, that's, but this is the exciting part of, of, of moving in. It won't be easy, of course, but this is what's, what's I guess, business is all about. It's the excitement of, of the journey itself. If you have that, then, then be an entrepreneur. But if you don't have this, then, then stick to a job because it's not for everyone, as we mm. all say. So this is my closing words. I, would, I can say and I can give as, a, uh, as, as an advice. Yeah, I was, well, you, you preempted what I was gonna ask as the last question, any pearls oh, of wisdom, <laughs> yeah. Any pearls of wisdom really for, so, so for the people that are listening to this and you know, maybe people in Hungary, people around the world thinking about being dissatisfied with where they're at, um, what would you, if somebody was sort of sat there in a unhappy in a job right now, what would you say to them is the sort of first step if they, if they were serious about wanting to change it, what would you say would be the first step for them to realistically start to think whether that journey is going to be for them or not? Uh, you know, there's a saying that um, if you don't try, you don't know. Mm. So uh all of us has fear and if someone says i don't have any fear maybe for sure they're lying because every successful people uh on, on earth they have fear but they just face this fear and just take that first step like i have fear too to move to japan i'm gonna be alone how long i want to get to my even to my place where i'm gonna stay now but i'm gonna sort this out so the fear is gonna be there anyway and um and I believe it's better to, 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 to die try than to never try. So like when you, when you reach your last days of your life, I don't want to ask myself, oh, wish I could have done this or wish I could have tried this. Because I tried, maybe I failed, maybe I didn't reach what I wanted, but at least I, I, I tried and did my best. So if, 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 if someone is in, I mean, let's say you are in the position where you want to, take that leap, just take that leap and see what's gonna happen because that's when, when magic happens and you take that first step. 
because you just take that leap and see how it's gonna go. It's not easy, it's damn hard. It, I have to admit it's really, really hard, but uh, I guess it's worth, it's worth to try to take that first step. Perfect, I love that. Um, I have asked a couple of my guests, it's usually however they talk prompts this question. Have you, have you ever read the surrender experiment? Mm, I haven't yet. You need to. You'll totally relate to it. It's in my top five. Surrender experiment, okay. Michael Singer. It's a fantastic book, so. Well, Norbert, thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you again um, and hearing more of your story and your little love story, which is really lovely. Um, I wish you all the best in Japan and, you know, with your new marriage and with your beautiful bride. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, um, how, where would be the best place for them to find you? Uh, the best place would be just go on Facebook and type my name, Norbert <laughs> Kunevix. Um, I will put it in the show notes, guys, because <laughs> I managed to pronounce it correctly at the beginning. Um, yeah, anyway, but I'll put it in the show notes. So um, you, I'll put the link in there so people can easily uh, click on the link. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, I can, I can obviously give my email addresses, but the Facebook is the easiest way yeah. to, to find, find me out. And uh, I have... I have two profiles, one of them, which I'm, which is the green background. This is the one, which is my business profile. So, so click on that and um, yeah, happy to connect with you and happy to share and help over what I can and with what I can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again. Um, good luck for five days time. I'm sure you're gonna find your apartment and, um, yeah. <laughs> and sign language will be the way for a month, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I learned a, a question which I have to ask, uh, like where I have to go. So I know this question, so, and uh, I have a phone. It's, it's a cool, long. yeah, exactly. We've got Google Translate these days, right? So, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Norbert, and uh, all the best. Thank you, Anani. Thank you for having me and have a lovely day. You're very welcome. Thank you, you too.